chic and, uh, as you said, sophisticated. Uh, the magazine is filled with oh, uh, car coats, sports cars, and this is a prospective sponsor out there. Do you figure that your viewer, I suppose he can't afford uh, the sports car, the sports coat? Well, I've been thinking about that. And I'm glad that you've got some guts. You're not interested in the people that don't have any money. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you people out there, this is just my opinion, you people out there are just going to have to wait till your own magazine comes along, the Reader's Digest, maybe, you know. They'll have their own TV show. Yeah, or uh, Field and Stream. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Field and Stream, the playmate for December has a duck in her mouth. <laughs> and she comes out with these sort of a group. The, uh, Let's see the magazine. Let's see. This is uh, the October one. With Eleanor on the cover. Yeah. Well, no, let me get a later one. Let me get a later play one here. Okay. The things I remember most about, uh, you know, the, mag the letters to the editor, I can always say, let's have some more of Linda Johnson. Those kind of <laughs> nuts who write in, you know. And, uh, that's always Linda Johnson writing in. <laughs> or her mother, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ralph Johnson. Mm. And, uh, then they had the things on the beatniks and that kind of, you know, that which is uh, magazine writing today. I imagine we're going to probably have a, a program d dedicated to beat one of these days soon with Kerouac and... There's a funny thing, friends. the beatniks. Mm -hmm. I went by a, uh, in, like a, a coffee you know, mm -hmm. shop mm -hmm. thing. So there's a guy with a beard there, you know, and I used to speak strictly in the hip idiom. So the guy's got the beard, and I figure I'll relax him, I'll talk hip. So I said, like, what's shaking, baby? And he, Started talking Jewish, he was a rabbi. <laughs> Which is like pretty. You can't rabbi. tell some of this. <laughs> yes, Beck, that's good, good. Can't tell with beers these days. Before, you know, uh, I, I admire Inspector Oski very much, and I like you. And I thought later, when we were talking early with Nat Cole, that I seemed a little hostile. You, and I actually I wasn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want that to come across. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if, if I'm very exuberant, you know, and I'll yell, you know, and then it sounds, it sounds like sort of rank, you know. So if I seem that way, I want to apologize to you. This yeah. is pretty different than the, than the TV shows you're used to doing, the Steve Allen things and the spectacular, a little more relaxed, and a little more fun. What kind of, uh, you work areas of humor that are controversial and according to some people, pretty sick. Um, do you consider yourself a sick comic? Um, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> do I consider myself sick? <laughs> no. Uh, there's a way, sick, let's take the word, you know, semantics, you know. There's no such thing, naturally, as sick comedy, you know. There's no such thing as beatniks. It's a writer's device. Uh, Beatniks were back as in Maxwell Bodenheim's era in the village. Uh, sick jokes go as far back as Shakespeare. But it's, uh, do you have a Kleenex or something? <laughs> have you got, one of the chicks got a Kleenex? Yeah? Uh, I never carry a handkerchief. <laughs> That's strange. I, I don't even have a, uh, do you have one? Good. Uh, I never do carry a handkerchief. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something I've never told anybody before. I've never blown my nose before. <laughs> the okay. first time. All right, say, this, is a, this is a TV yeah. first. Television first. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, should I just do it on camera? I'm sure you've never <laughs> blown your nose on camera before. I think it's allowed. <laughs> All right, I mean... It's a uh, casual show. And, uh, it's, uh, it, what does the code say? Just, uh, just let it go, eh? So. I think so. I, am I in a close shot? <laughs> I'd like to... Uh, we'll bring okay. Bring up and bring up the sound. Here it goes. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'll, I'll just turn it around. You get the fear. I hate it. Give me back my hand. No, I, I'm really going to do it. I'm not putting you on. <laughs> All right, here it goes. Where did you get this? Is this a rug swatch? That's All right, right. <laughs> next thing I think. I'm going to dress my rug. No. no. What? Oh, this is... Where are we uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Now, maybe... There's... See, that, that's how, that could start to be a whole new vogue for comedy, you know. Or I make th th this may be my thing on television. You see the guy that blew his nose on Penthouse Party? <laughs> and I got on a Jack Parr show. Mm -hmm. And then it could just start to build, you know. And I could do interviews and that. And then they could label it like sick comedy. You know, the guy say, well, uh, when did you first start blowing your nose on television? Well, it was just 
Just one time, I was with Hugh Hefner, Inspector Oski, and I just, <laughs> I sniffled, and the guy said, uh, do you want to use my handkerchief? And it, it just happened. It, it was a meeting of the minds, <laughs> sort of. And I just blew my nose, and then I became controversial. <laughs> just going around, and uh, you can just do it once a night, though. What's, Unlike, it like, uh, what's it like doing a show like, uh, well, Steve Allen's or any of the big network shows? Is it... Uh, you can't blow your nose. That's one of them. No, there are some restrictions. Yeah. You, you can't right, imagine. Uh, did Steve ever let you con him out of a handkerchief? I mean, no. I noticed that <laughs> you rewrote history yeah, there. You said, uh, I offered you the handkerchief. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll never get it back. There were some restrictions, but not from Steve Allen. Uh, do you know Steve Allen's been trusted? We used to work him. I think you'll agree, maybe, that I feel he is the most literate. He is a proud, the most erudite, humane humorous on the American scene today. Besides comedy, he's interested, and I'm not being facetious now, Strodium 90, Fallout. Does he ever send you any of that kind of literature? He's very active, you know, with the Albert Schweitzer kind of thing, and I, I really like him. But he doesn't control the whole show. Profit, motivation, and sponsors do. So, <laughs> when I did the first show, you know, they had, the, you know, they're naturally afraid of the way I work, you know, and it's a live show, it's not taped, so I could have, you know, been pretty irreverent. So they had me audition, which is very hard for me. I do pretty spontaneous humor, and to do word-for-word -word comedy is just horrendous. So I did a joke, and Steve is cracking up, he's laughing, but the producer, Bill Harback, you know, he's laughing, but he's got a little more to lose, like, ha ha ha! That kind of thing. So I did a joke on the show. Oh, yeah. I made reference to uh, a joke I used to do, and I said that I have a tattoo, you know, which I actually have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got this in Malta, in the Mediterranean, about 1942. And I said that, uh, in a joke I did on the show, I said I smoked Marlboros when I was six years old and it grew up. <laughs> you know, which is like a funny joke. Okay, now, uh, then I went into a truism. And I said, because of this tattoo, uh, I never can be buried in a Jewish cemetery. That's the truth. That's the orthodox scene. You have to go out of the world the way you came in, with no marks or no changes here. You know? So when I got back from Malta, I was over my aunt's house in Jamaica, Long Island, and she's very orthodox. So I'm in her kitchen. I'm washing with a roky soap there, you know. Yeah. So she pins the tattoo, and she flips, you know. She goes, ah! <laughs> a real Jewish minor bird. Okay. So did. You run your arm. You can be back in the Jewish cemetery. I said, what do you nudge me for? Me, me, they'll cut the sword, they'll bury this in a Gentile cemetery. You know? And uh, leave me alone. Okay, which is like cute anyway. Okay, now, continuity says to me, uh, you can't do that. You can't, uh, so why not? He said, well, it's definitely offensive to the Jewish people. I said, you're a nut. He said, no, no, it is blah, 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 blah. He said, any time we do any humor on any ethnic groups, you know, uh, there's a lot of mail. Now, let me first set that straight. I think that anybody who writes in to anybody are wax. Nuts. Any of you people out of your skull out there who sit in and write stations, you know. Because I know anyone who's got a function, married women with children are too busy, you know, uh, guys who work. So it has to be some... Sh complete far out wacko who's sitting alone in a furnished room, you know, with a TV set the Goodwill gave him, you know, and he's saying, ah, oh, that's dirty. <laughs> you know, and meanwhile he's choking pigeons and a <laughs> good craft ebbing background, you know. Oh, I got up on a tangent. Well, anyway, so the guy said to me, uh, I can't do the joke. I said, well, later, I'm not going to do the show, you know, because I've got enough bread, I don't have to make this scene, you know. So I said to me, no, nah, no, nah, blah, 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 blah. You see, you don't need that. I said, look, it's not offensive to the Jewish people. I'm Jewish, and it doesn't offend me, and I represent. I'm the Messiah, okay? <laughs> so I said, no, nah, no. Nah. Okay, now, dig, they have a whole hassle, you know? <laughs> So the guy goes back, and there's about 20 guys. They all get together, and they talk it over. And the guy comes back, and he says, Lenny, we talked it all over, and it's definitely offensive to the Gentile people, too. <laughs> I said, how do you figure that? He said, well, what you're saying in essence is that the Gentiles don't care what they bury. <laughs> so, you know, go fight that kind of thing. Oh, oh. too much. 
Uh, well, we hope we'll have no such problems with um, with our show here. We're gonna. No, it's to... it's getting better, you know. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I sense a uh, a change in the times and an ability to discuss things more openly on TV and movies. Uh, I think we're going magazines. through a, a very interesting transition. 